and welcome to this episode of Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, and today we're going to be talking about litter, why it's a problem, what you can do to prevent it, and what you can do once it's already out there. I have two guests with me today, Sam Endicott, who is a volunteer and a board member for the Clean City Commission, and Debbie Blanton, who's the director of the Clean City Commission. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you. So we're talking about mess and gross stuff today. Right. Why, um, why do people litter? What, how does that happen? Um, they litter because they see litter. That's, that's one really big cause of litter, is just the, um, the psychological release that comes from seeing litter in a place already. They litter because they think somebody else is going to pick it up, and so they have no need to keep track of themselves. And it, litter happens accidentally sometimes. Litter falls out of a trash can when it's being emptied. Um, you're walking across a parking lot and something blows out of your hand and it's a windy day and you can't catch up with it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not always intentional. But 80% of littering is intentional, which means that somebody has littered on purpose. Wow, so. wow, that's, uh, that's high. It's high. And what does that do to the city, to the impact of, of what you see as you drive through a city? You well, studied um, litter. Yes. Uh, well, it, it's, it's unattractive, so we have eye pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, city, the city leaders, you know, if I, if they, they would have three main goals. Making Hampton a, a desirable place to live, making des Hampton a desirable place to establish a business, mm -hmm. or making it a, a desirable tourist destination. Litter can frustrate all three of those goals. Uh, other impacts litter have is it increases our taxes. It's very expensive to clean up. Very it expensive. is. Uh, and also it's, it's unhealthy. It, it attracts uh, vermin. It attracts uh, wild animals, uh, the seagulls, and, and leaving their, their waste behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, uh, it also affects our, our personal health, human health, and our, the health of our pets. As, as they're exposed to the litter. And then one of the things you were telling me earlier is then there's also, it's not just littering on the earth because we live at sea level and we have rivers and streams and, and lakes and oceans and bays. A lot of that in a heavy rain is gonna go somewhere and, and tell us what that impact is. Well, we, we have an expression, think uh, globally, act locally. Mm -hmm. And how that applies to litter is every single piece of litter, whether it's uh, a fast food napkin, uh, a cigarette butt, uh, or a plastic bag from a grocery, uh, if it isn't picked up, it will blow or get washed through our drainage systems into our rivers, our creeks, our rivers, which empty into our bays, which empty into the oceans. Right now, we have what is known as the floating islands of trash. And I, and I encourage your listeners mm. to Google that, that term. It, they, they will be uh, alarmed that there are uh, floating islands of trash in the Atlantic and in the Pacific that are as large as the state of Texas. Oh my gosh. And they're on, it's on the surface or right below the surface. This is affecting our, our, our food chain uh, it's affecting the wildlife, and it, it's a growing issue, and, and, and it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a serious concern that uh, everyone should have. Okay, so step one is really not to litter. And for people who think cigarette butts don't count, they do count. They absolutely <laughs> count. N not only do they count, we on the litter committee, cons we put them in their own separate category because they're so uh, ubiquitous. Uh, uh, we, we count them as, as we pick them up, mm -hmm. but we are losing ground. There are more being thrown down daily than we can even think about. Uh, the litter, I mean the volunteers picking up, uh, they also are poisoning our food chain with their tars and nicotines leaching into the water. And the soil. And, and the soil, uh, and it's affecting the, the, the smaller food, the, the worms or the, uh, the water fleas that are eaten by the, 
the other animals, then, then we consume those animals. Mm -hmm. So it, it's poisoning our food chain. Wow, wow. Yeah, um, one cigarette butt poisons two gallons of water. So for every cigarette butt that a person throws out, they're basically killing the, the little water fleas and other small creatures in two gallons of water. And the small creatures are important because the way the food chain works is that right. that's how the larger get big uh, enough right. for us mm -hmm. to eat them. Yes. So they're hurting the seafood industry and mm -hmm. um, all of the important things, recreation things that our region exactly. depends on for the water. Well, one of the examples I use with children when I go into the schools to educate is you don't want to be swimming at Buckrow Beach and find your toes tangled around trash. And of course, none of them want to and none of us want to. But we have to take the steps to prevent that. So how do we do that? And, and first of all, let me ask him, how did you get involved in, in becoming a volunteer? Well, I think the way most volunteers become, I, I just personally dislike litter. And uh, I wanted to do something about it. I mean, I want to live in a, in a, in a clean Hampton. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, I donated my time. I, I asked for an adopt-a-spot. Uh, and I, I go out there about 10 times a year to clean it. So where is your spot? My spot is Kentucky Avenue in front of War Memorial Stadium. Uh, I, I know every square inch of that <laughs> quite well. <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah. Now, Debbie, how does that work? If somebody has a place that is near maybe where they live or work, or they just notice a problem and want to get involved, how, how do they do that? All they have to do is contact our office, and you can do that by going to the website, by calling us at 727-1130, or by emailing me at hccc at hampton.gov. They say, we want to be a part of the Adopt-a-Spot program. We send information. They, if they have a site in mind already, they tell us what site they want to do, and we say that's great, usually. Occasionally we can't say that. And then they just sign up. They borrow the equipment from us. They use the equipment. They return it. They give us a report, and then we recognize their efforts in a variety of ways, including a volunteer recognition dinner in October. That's great. Now, approximately how many volunteers do you have? Do you know? In the Adopt-a-Spot program, we have over... 4,000 volunteers, between 4,000 and 5,000, depending on the year. Wow. Overall volunteers for our programs are in the neighborhood of 7,000 to 8,000 volunteers. So all of those volunteers cleaning up litter just in Hampton. Just in Hampton. How much do you think that is saving taxpayers? Because most of what you clean is along the roadsides, along medians, right. along areas that the city is, is responsible for. In the neighborhood of $400,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. And that's not counting um, other costs that are associated with that litter. That's simply the labor to pick up the trash. So if all these volunteers didn't do it, 400000 a half a million, that's equivalent to a, a tax rate increase of about a half a penny on the tax rate, which is, um, wow. which is quite a bit, actually. You're better at math than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if people don't want to pay for a staff to go out and clean up these roads, your suggestion would be? Join the Adopt-a-Spot program and participate in other special cleanups. I mean, People don't have to dedicate themselves to one spot. They can participate in a variety of special cleanups. We have um, two coming up just in the next couple of months. The Great American Cleanup, which the regional kickoff will be April 27th and 28th. The overall campaign is ongoing through May. And then the Clean the Bay Day Cleanup, which is the first Saturday in June. And that's a big one. That's, that's a, coordinated with, usually with other localities. Right. And, it's a regional cleanup as well. And so you can have volunteer opportunities, whether it's a one-day blitz that somebody Absolutely. volunteers for or an ongoing commitment. Or, for example, if there's a vacant lot near your house and you just want to clean it up one time, you can borrow the equipment from us and do that. Now, you really do want people to register and go through you, and, and what is right. the reason for that? Um, part of the reason for that is that we can provide equipment, trash bags, litter sticks, safety vests, work gloves. We provide the safety information because litter can be harmful, as Sam mentioned, to people as well as to pets. So we, we want to make sure you're safe. Mm -hmm. And also, when you contribute to the overall cause, that it helps encourage other people to get involved in that cause. It's, it's a bandwagon effect. So what you do encourages other people. And then 
hopefully we'll all be taking care of the litter in our city and the only people we'll be shaking our fingers at will be people who travel through. <laughs> That's a great goal. And I do want to emphasize that because of the safety issues, we don't want people out, particularly on the sides of the road, exactly. without having been through you and, and gotten the vests and some of the right. other safety Because equipment. it's much safer. Our litter sticks are great because then you don't have to actually physically touch the trash. You just put it into the trash bag with the litter stick. What well, also probably helps those of us who are certain age you don't want to bend over all exactly. that much. It makes it a little <laughs> easier on your back. Yes. Well, what other efforts do you have going on that you want to talk about today? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Great American Cleanup kickoff coming up. Uh, we're going to be focusing on four sites, three of them schools. Uh, Aberdeen, Burbank, and Cooper Elementary Schools need volunteers. Aberdeen is going to be uh, cleaned up on April 27th. Cooper and Burbank on April 28th. And then we are cleaning up the interchange of LaSalle and Mercury Boulevard, which is an adults only cleanup on April 28th. Adults only probably because of the roadways and because the traffic. Because of the roadways, and that, yeah. right. And, and because it, the, the blind spots, it's just a more dangerous location. Mm -hmm. We don't allow people younger than 18 to participate in any high speed roadways. Mm -hmm. But we do have special um, consideration for adults to clean up Hampton Road Center Parkway and LaSalle Avenue and other locations like that. Okay. And, and another effort that uh, uh, we're proud of is our litter directives. We, we briefed Mary Bunting, the, the city manager, uh, about four months ago, uh, giving her a, our, our opinion, a, a comprehensive plan where we harness the entire city government to fight this problem. Uh, and we're, it, right now it's being staffed and uh, we're very excited about that effort also. Well, I know that it came up in the community plan, mm -hmm. um, that, that five-year effort that volunteers put together to say, what do we want Hampton to right. be over the next five years or even beyond? And appearance and pride in the appearance was very important to people. And pollution prevention. Mm -hmm. and, and the litter prevention efforts include all of those. Well, and certainly if you can prevent it, then that's a whole lot less cost and a whole right. lot fewer volunteer hours that could go to something else. Exactly. And then you have to think of it, too, in terms of your vision of where, what you want where you live to look like. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to drive down your street dodging paper bags and plastic bags and plastic cups and straws and cigarette butts? Or do you want to drive down a street that's clean and neat and looks nice? And that's the question every Hampton resident has to ask him or herself. Well, that's... Well, and, and I, I would also uh, add that uh, litter leads to blight and blight leads to crime. So litter has a, a very close correlation with, our, with a crime rate uh, and uh, a, a potential criminal would seek out an area that is not well maintained where the residents give the impression that they, that they don't care or they're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. That's even more critical. Right. That's an interesting point. I don't think people think about that. They think about their little one piece of trash as, as living in and of itself and not a part of the bigger picture right. and what that and means. And each piece of trash is part of that bigger picture mm -hmm. because when one piece of trash falls, it's going to encourage someone else to come along and drop some more. That's right. That's very interesting. Well, I thank you guys for coming by, and I, I think this needs to be an ongoing discussion. And again, it is part of the community plan and, and part of the long-term plan to make this be a city that, that we're proud of and that we want people to right. come and see and But we'd at. love to come back and talk about litter, talk about trash. That's great. Talking about tr talking right. trash, we'll talking call trash. It. Yeah. That sounds a little better. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Debbie, and thank, thank you, you, Sam, for coming welcome. by. And thank you for watching this episode of Round Robin. I hope you'll come back also.